have to defend it by Attorney Dow, which I have read. And with that said, I'll hear from uh, State's Attorney Waller. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, you know, I think something that, that I know Your Honor and I and Attorney Dow have talked about you know, at length when it comes to this case is, you know, this case in, in a lot of ways is kind of a puzzle in that uh, it's puzzling that, that Ms. Scanlon, uh, an otherwise upstanding citizen working for the city, having a job that probably most people who uh, live in the city of Shelton would love to have, according to the PSI, a job uh, with substantial responsibility and a job where you're compensated by the city of Shelton for upwards of $80,000 a year. You know, most people I know would, uh, would love to be able to have a job like that. And at the same time that she's given that responsibility, as the PSI indicates, as the investigation, a very thorough investigation by the Connecticut State Police, uh, showed basically for about eight years, every month, at the beginning of the month, Ms. Scanlon made the conscious decision to steal between seven and $10,000 from the city of Shelton, almost as if it was a second paycheck. Um, it, it just, it, it's puzzling to me, and, and you know, I know we've, we've had this discussion before in any number of uh, uh, sentencings, why do good people do bad things? And that's really what this comes down to. I think as the PSI points out, this is an individual who other than this uh, uh, criminal behavior has led an upstanding life, raised two children, has a husband who uh, uh, was certainly supportive prior to uh, uh, this uh, uh, occurrence, and yet, uh, you know, takes this much money. I mean, it, and, and where did the money go? That's one of the things that we always, one of the questions I've always had in my mind is where did the money go in this case? You know, how can one take that much money, which let's face it, you know, when it's strictly cash and it's going in your pocket, as I'm sitting there thinking, you know, $10,000 a month, that's, that's akin to having an extra, you know, when you, when you think about taxes, having a, having a job that probably pays you $180,000 or $190,000 a year. You have to have a job of about that much money in order to be taking home what this defendant was stealing on top of an $80,000 a year salary that she was earning for the city of Shelton. I know the uh, uh, PSI talks about the fact that, that because of her financial troubles now, that she's uh, in the process of losing her home. Again, something that's puzzling to me. How can someone who, according to the PSI, has owned her home for 25 years, a home that when I checked was built in 1988 or about 26 years ago, uh, and is worth $400,000, how can you have that much money left to pay off when you've been stealing 10 grand a year for eight years. So where did the money go? She's never explained it. She states in her PSI that she doesn't have a drug problem, she doesn't have an alcohol problem, uh, that she used the money to support her family. But again, living just on her income alone, that would be an income of akin to about $270,000 a year doesn't seem as if she lived lavishly. It doesn't seem as if she sent her kids to the most expensive private school in Connecticut. You know, she, she provided for her family along with her husband, and yet none of this money is wrong. To her credit, she has uh, uh, turned over her, uh, as the PSI indicates, turned over her retirement savings. Uh, you know, that's, that does have some, uh, I think she should be given some credit for that. However, you know, if, if she didn't voluntarily give it over, let's face it, there's a, there's a Connecticut state law now since uh, uh, that's been passed uh, due to uh, transgressions of other public officials where basically that money can be forfeited to the state as restitution anyway. So I give her credit for saving the state and the Attorney General's office the, uh, uh, the need to go through that, uh, that legal proceeding. Um, but other than that, you know, I think the PSI pretty much speaks for itself, that this is, this is a, uh, a serious case, a violation of the trust of the taxpayers of the city of Shelton. You know, these people, as we all know, you know, and other than this, she's one of these people. 
you know, a taxpayer of the city of Shelton, somebody, you know, all these people who live in that town who have to wake up every day and go to work, go to work at a job probably that pays half of what she was making in order to make ends meet. All of the people who send their kids to the schools that she sent her kids to, who have to get up every morning, go to work, pay their taxes, do all the things that all of us have to do, all the things that we have to suffer in order to provide for our families. And she had to do that too. And then you think, why the heck would someone like that choose not once, and, I, and this is something that really, when Attorney Dow and I, and I know your honor, when we discuss this case, the things that you, you kind of have to think about, it. this isn't a mistake. Like, I made a mistake. I did something one time and ruined my life with a rash decision. I mean, we've all sat here a hundred times and we've had cases where someone chose to drink and drive or someone chose to do drugs and did something horrible that caused them uh, to impact their families and the families of others. And, you know, while, and while that's heinous and, and we've, uh, we've all had sentencings like that, you know, this is, this is something completely different. This is something where every single month for the five years that we're allowed to go back and look and prosecute for, for those five years, every single month, she chose to make that mistake. And she didn't just make it once. She had to figure out how she was going to take it. Then she had to bring it over to the bank and deposit it. Every single month she had to make that.